Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is the 25th of August 2023. Alexa, what's the time please? It's 9.23am. Alexa, what's the date today? Today is Friday the 25th of August. Alexa, what's... Would you like to... Alexa, what's the weather like? Alexa, the weather... Sorry, something went wrong. Alexa, what's the weather outlook? Currently, in Rochester it's 16 degrees Celsius with mostly sunny skies. Today, you can expect intermittent clouds, with a high of 21 degrees and a low of 12 degrees. Also, there's a flood alert in effect. Alexa, can you tell me a joke? Did you hear about the terrible accident at the curry factory? Apparently someone fell into a coma. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. On this day in 2012, the body of King Richard III was found by archaeologists under a car park in Leicester, nearly 40 years after the location had first been suggested. He's since been reinterred in Leicester Cathedral. Right guys, so today is the anniversary of my father Derek Trower's death. He died at 1.30 in the morning on the 25th of August 2021, a sudden death, a heart attack. He suffered from heart arrhythmia, COPD, and he often told me he, he, he knew he was going to die. So he, he actually was ready for it, but I mean, as everybody knows, you don't know where and you don't know when, but he knew he was going to die. He told me he was receiving end-of-life care, and he knew. But it was sudden. So I've just had a message from somebody, good morning, happy Friday. And it's not me that's experiencing noise this morning. It's someone opposite me, underneath. I don't really want to go outside. So if you can see from my window, it's a bit stained. That upstairs on the third floor of the opposite flats, that that's been empty for about three or four weeks so there's a guy up there he keeps bending over in his grey trousers he's uh, fixing the third floor flat opposite me and he's been banging for about 15 minutes so the poor guy underneath is probably hearing all that banging so I'm at my flat there's my plants and my table. I'm not, I'm not opening the window, I'm blatantly pointing it at people. My window's got a bit of where the rains, you can see the stains where the rains come down yesterday. So that is opposite me. The guy with blonde hair or greyish hair, I can't tell, is banging loudly on the third floor flat opposite me because it's been empty. So they obviously want to move somebody in. So that is the scene. And there's a load of banging. Heavy hammering. And what did Levi Belfield attack women with? Blondes, a hammer. So the guy opposite me is hammering. Levi Belfield was called the Hammer Killer, wasn't he? The Hammer Killer. And he was supposed to prefer blondes and he, ha he killed blondes. So every so often that guy turns round and he's got a hammer in his hand. And he's banging. Right, so when I got cut off of that previous video, um, I was reading a diary from 
so Monday 25th of June 2018 1.25pm excuse me if you see me get up if you see me get up uh, my camera keeps cutting off so I'm gonna turn around and read this while watching my camera because it keeps cutting off so this is my handwriting this is my diary from 2018. Monday 25th of June 2018, 1.25pm. I cannot believe that me, Crystal, is 50 years old this year on September the 27th. I can't say that the year so far has been anything exciting because it has not. I have no male company in my life now at all, which does feel strange, but at the same time it is healthy and good. Graham, I have not heard from since last year. Two years before, well, a year before my birthday, in fact. As he told me that um, his wife found out. I lost complete contact with him, not that I am bothered about it. I don't meet anyone or really talk to anyone since Graham either. It takes getting used to, back to me being in control of my life. And Kylie Minogue was 50 this year, the same as me. So Kylie Min Minogue now is 54. Kylie Minogue, the Australian singer. We're all getting older. And Basil Brush, who probably will live forever because he's a puppet, Basil Brush, the hand puppet, is also 50. Boom! Boom! I go to the library a lot now, minding my own business. It's the same in there, if not worse. Horrible in this extreme heat we've been having lately. Beverly, for the past month, the lady that lived with Jason at number 14, who moved out three months ago, and Jason left her and went to London, keeps coming up to me in the library. So today, um, I haven't seen her. Beverly has moved to Pembroke Court. It's a really nice sheltered block of flats, mainly for old age pensioners. Her brother pays the rent, a thousand pound a month, as he controls her money. She has a disability, she has learning disab disabilities. Um, people with learning disab disabilities, some of them have, you know, speech that is different from the rest of us. Their speech is different. So she got bullied because she talked differently to other people. Beverly told me they have nibble nights, bingo nights, and she's made loads of friends at Pembroke Court. Gareth and Paul from the flats, she said she, she didn't get on with them because they bullied her. Well, Gareth used to argue with Beverly, uh, so did Dave, one of the guys from the flats, and Dave used to call Beverly Olive from on the buses. So when she came up the path, he would say, hello, Olive. And he was taking the mickey out of the way Beverly looked and the way Beverly spoke. And Beverly had been to the landlord about it, but her landlord would not help her. So her family had to pay for Beverly to be put in private accommodation. So she had it because she spoke differently and she had a disability. <clears throat> Paul a while later died at Lansdowne Court he died in his bath he was stabbed to death by a prostitute that's what I was told two people in those flats that I was living in told me that Paul died he was stabbed to death in his bath by a prostitute at my old accommodation 
<clears throat> Beverly took me round to her room at Pembroke Broke Court. Her room was lovely. Nice TV, comfy chair and sofa, and they have a laundry room. And I'm still stuck in this flat. The same for the past seven years. 2011 I moved in before my sister died of multiple sclerosis. A few days before Amanda died, I moved into this flat. Beverly had her knitting on the sofa. Do you know I can't knit? My, my, my nan, my, my grandma taught me to crochet when I was a teenager. But I can't knit. I've never knitted. Beverly looked tired and thin. I stayed for a cup of tea she made me and then I left. When I left Beverly's flat it was horrible walking home to Lansdowne Court. Beverly had asked me if I was getting the bus. Remember Levi Belfield attacked women when they came off buses. I've got a guy up there hammering opposite me. Levi Belfield attacked women off of buses. So Beverly asked me if I was getting the back bus and why would I get the bus when Lansdowne Court was just a five minute walk away, if that. I walked up Chatham High Street, people eating Greg's pasties in my face because Beverly had made me a cup of tea but I hadn't had anything to eat so people were stuffing Greg's pasties in my face I did manage to get some bits in the pound shop I had some money I rarely answer my mobile phone so I don't hear the voices or read any text because they make me angry and upset I am still finding this world a really nasty and cruel place to live in. Trying to cope on my own, but I'm trying my best. Mary Ramazani, the dentist from Chatham, dental surgery, was walking past my, the library last week. The lady I complained about to the solicitors about my teeth was walking past me while I was in the library. She was all smart and talking on her mobile phone. I lost my case against her and I won't be going to that dentist again. No compensation. I've had to go to another dentist where I've had nine teeth removed, nine teeth removed because she didn't do root canals properly. They weren't done properly. In fact, I was told they weren't root canals. They were just heavily filled teeth that hadn't been, had been root canaled at all. But I, the solicitor came back with, it was my fault because I hadn't been to the dentist and I'd been to the dentist every two weeks in that year and they, the, the solicitors came back and told me it was my fault because I, I hadn't gone to the dentist. So I did try and uh, get a case against the dentist but it came back that my case was closed because there was no evidence to, to, sell, to, to the dentist being in the wrong. There was no case against the dentist because I hadn't been to the dentist and I'd been to the dentist twice a week. I was in the dentist in agony every, nearly every week in pain because 
the root canals at that dentist weren't root canals and um, the premier dental surgery performed two fillings and they put them on the nerve on the nerve so every time I ate I was in excruciating agony and my son came with me at that time and watched um, sat and watched while the dentist did two fillings on my teeth and they weren't done properly they'd actually ruined two of my teeth by putting the filling right on top top of the middle of the tooth nerve and I had to wait two weeks for it to get sorted out so for 14 days that filling was on the nerve right on top of it and you can know what it's like when pain, pain in the nerves nerve pain so they they put the filling on the nerve Every time I ate, I nearly screamed in agony. But when you complain, when you, you know, they don't compensate you and they don't do anything and it's never their fault. So all those teeth that the one dentist filled, was supposed to have done root canals, the dentist in Railway Street, he pulled all of them out, which was nine teeth in total that had been damaged and not fixed properly by the previous dentist. I lost nine of my teeth through negligence. A negligent dentist. A Turkish dentist. Turkish dentist. My son is half Turkish and it was a Turkish dentist that ruined my teeth. At least eight of them. Six of them were not root canals at all. I'd gone to I'd gone to a like a a place in um, where my sister actually uh, worked in a baker's so they sent me to like a, a healthcare place to check my teeth out and see what needed doing and the woman said this, this dentist has not done root canals, they're not root canals at all, they're not root canals. She said I, I don't know what they are, they've been filled but they're not root, root canals. I, I had bits of tooth all broken in my gum. She'd actually, I'd actually ha had fillings and she'd broken the teeth and I had shards of teeth stuck in my gums. I had to keep going back, I was in agony, absolute agony. And I remember being told to write a letter. Um, I, I'd gone back to that dentist, I'd gone back in there to complain and um, they called me in, in and said, you've complained about us. I said, yes, I've complained about you because, you, you, you know, I, 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 awkward situation. I, I was told to uh, write a letter saying that it wasn't the dentist's fault. And it was. But I had just, they questioned me after I'd had injections supposedly having root canals so I was questioned when I was under like I was sedated they called me into the office after I'd been like had tooth root canals they called me into a room and told me to to retract what I said about them in that they made me sign something under duress and they also said to the solicitor, I, I was not right in the head, apparently. That dentist said that I was, was not right in the head. And I, do, I got sick of that. Everybody saying that to get off what they've done with me. I'm mental. I'm mad. It's, it's not true. Not true. 
I lost my case against the dentist and another dentist had to remove the teeth that the previous denti dentist had fucked up. The dental solicitor told, wrote back and said to me, I, I'd sent off, so the evidence went missing. They asked me for three of the teeth. Three, the, the, the dental solicitors asked me to send three of my extracted teeth to them and of course I was giving them the evidence they never sent me my teeth back I sent recorded delivery three badly bad bad filled teeth as evidence they never returned the evidence back uh, and it was no use I didn't even get 5p compensation nothing and yet they'd asked me to send my teeth in the post. I went through all that for, for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Waste of time. But I wasn't.